Hello everyone, welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I'm your host Paula Taylor and this is episode 162. So today we are going to be talking about what's the deal with the 3D, 5D timeline split. We've done a little bit of a series here of what's the deal with. We did what's the deal with past lives. We did what's the deal with ancestral healing. What's the deal with star seeds. So we're going to be talking today about the 3D, 5D timeline split. If that means nothing to you, don't worry. I'm going to explain it the best that I understand it so that we have some common understanding of this. So if you're starting from zero and you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. If you're already kind of in the loop about what this is, I may be able to help dispel some misinformation about this because there's a lot of fear mongering going on. There's a lot of all or nothing black and white thinking. There's a lot of this sort of puritanical, what I think of as puritanical Christian belief uh, around sort of good and bad, yes and no, black and white thinking. I like to think of this more linearly. So let me give a little bit of background about where the wording of this came from, and then I'm gonna talk about my understanding of this, and then we're, I'm going to give you some tools because the and this is happening right now. Since the middle of last year, I've been getting this information about a huge activation that was coming in in the middle of this year, and we've been ratcheting up to this. I've been talking about this for months on the podcast, and this is the time. It's happening right now. Now, does this mean that if you end up listening to this after this week that it's not ap applicable to you? Absolutely not. This is just the beginning of this. So just for the podcast, we're leading up to the weekend of June 15th, 2024, which is when this huge activation is coming in, I believe. I think it's a little different for everyone, too. I think there's a, there's a window here. The window is opening. The window is going to remain open, and this is just the beginning of this journey. So this is not like an instantaneous thing where these timelines split and then you have no access to go back and forth between them. We've been already kind of starting this divergence, but this is the time when we're really, the, the layers are peeling aside. So before I get too far ahead of myself into that, let's talk about the language in here. I'm not a huge fan of this, honestly, but sometimes the easiest thing is to use the terminology that other people are using. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of terminology around this, and I'm gonna give you my understanding of the way I think about this. So this idea of a 3D, 5D timeline split, a lot of people back years ago, there was a psychic named Dolores Cannon, and she started talking about the new earth, how there were these star seeds, there were people seeding the earth from other places, from other quantum realms, who were here to help this awakening of this new earth, this expansion of humanity into a more loving existence, essentially. I believe that this is kind of, as far as I know, and of course I'm sure there's always people doing things independently and using different languaging, but that is like the origination of this idea that I am aware of. And at some point in time, it started being discussed as this idea of going from 3D to 5D, so like three-dimensional to five-dimensional. And so that's the languaging that's kind of stuck with this. And so I'm going to stick with that just because people who are have already been looking into this, this is kind of the, the languaging they're used to. I'm going to give you what I hope is a more expansive understanding of this because, again, this 3D, 5D thing, we have this history of being really judgmental. And actually, we're being asked to be less judgmental. That's part of this expansion. So when we use terms like low vibe and high vibe, for example, one of my biggest pet peeves as a sound healer, we need all of the vibrations. What people are talking about when they say low vibe versus high vibe to me is clear vibrations and muddy vibrations. So we are born with beautiful, clear vibrations with this really expansive, loving, energetic field. A lot of us come in with some karmic stuff, ancestral stuff, so there's a little bit of muddiness maybe in the field when we're born, but we're about as clear as we get generally when we're born. And then society and personal trauma, developmental trauma, all of this stuff kind of muddies up 
our field. And our field exists within the body as well as around the body. So when people say low vibe versus high vibe, to me what they mean is they're, they're looking for clearer vibrations. They're looking for more expanded and harmonious vibrations. I also don't like the term healing. I like clarity, expansion, and harmony. But language is important. It's important to understand and be precise about what you're talking about. And so it's one of the reasons I don't particularly like the 3D, 5D, because there's a little bit of judgmentalness there, just like low vibe and high vibe. We exist in a vertical hierarchy. Someone is better than someone else, is better than someone else, is better than someone else. That's not true. That's what we're letting go of. That's part of what the 5D is. 5D is heart-centered living. 5D is expanding beyond this idea that we are separate individuals, this idea that one person is more important than another person, this idea that there's a hierarchy in any form, in any space. And I like to flip all of that linearly. So instead of a vertical hierarchy, something's better than, better than, better than, low vibe, high vibe. This is like about expansion. This is about going from a narrower kind of vibration to a more expanded vibration. And vibration, there's no judgment in vibration. Vibration is what it is. I'm probably going to say that multiple times through this because it's really important. Um, but essentially, 3D is a denser vibration than 5D. 5D is a more expanded vibration. So we exist in the 3D. We've been in the 3D for a long time. We are now having this opportunity to expand into the 5D. A lot of us have already done this are already operating in the 5D much of the time. When I'm in my treatment room, I, I'm in the 3D because I've got to get into the density to help people release it. I am inviting them into a more expanded space. That's what people are calling the 5D. So we're going to try to let go of the judgment around this. I'm going to try to dispel some of the fear that people have around this by describing this in a little bit of a different way, giving a couple different examples as I usually do to try to make this a little more concrete. And then we're gonna talk about how do we get there? How do we, how do we gracefully make this transition? It's an invitation. This is happening for us, not to us. And that is something that I have to remind myself coming from a background of pretty dense negativity. I was raised in this like denseness of sort of seeing the worst in things, seeing the worst in people, expecting the worst outcomes, that is a very dense kind of 3D way of being. And throughout the years, I started this journey when I was about 16, so that was 30 years ago, I have worked to dispel that density, to bring more and more expansion. The more space we have in our field, we talk about this a lot, the, the less density is there. So if you think about, this is the example I always give, and this works for density too. If you take a little rubber bouncy ball and you throw it in a small closet, it's going to go bounce, 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 ding, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That is a good representation of density in terms of vibration. Density is a lot of vibration in a little bit of space to the point that we experience it as being solid. That's, we could get into a whole quantum thing. I'm not a scientist, we're not going down that road. If you take the same rubber bouncy ball and you throw it in a stadium, it's not even gonna bounce back to you because there's so much more space in that stadium. There's so much more space for the vibration to, to exist in. You don't have that bouncing and that bouncing is really what density is. Again, at a certain point, there's no space for that bouncing and it becomes like a solid wall. And I experienced that, I've been working with energy, I've been working with people as a professional energy worker for 21 years. So I experienced all different levels of density in terms of vibration. And generally what we are usually going for is release of density and embrace of expansion. That's usually what we're looking for. And I'm gonna kind of explain why, again, in hopefully a linear way, not like a vertical hierarchy, like expansion's better than density, we need density. We're in a physical plane. That's one of the first misconceptions about this. Some people are thinking of this as like the rapture, where like, like people will just no longer be in this reality, like they're going to disappear. That's not the case, because 
in terms of density, this isn't actually on the grand scale of density. This isn't that huge of a leap. It feels like a really big leap to us. So let me explain kind of hopefully in a way that makes sense what we're talking about here. And I talked about this on the what's the deal with star seeds in a lot of detail on that episode. You can always go back and listen to that one. But essentially, the way that my guides show this to me, because I have a lot of religious baggage around things like Christian terminology, so they, they have given this idea of density to me in differentiation. So at the source of everything that is, that is unconditional love. That is what some people call God or source or spirit, ki, chi, prana. This is the source of all that is. And the way my guides like to show this to me is as a giant battery, or I'm kind of a Star Trek nerd, so as a warp core, in like in Star Trek, what powers the ship in Star Trek. So, but you can think of like a giant battery. So in the beginning, before there was any differentiation, everything was source. Everything was this battery. But source can't experience, you can't experience something when everything's the same. We don't know what light is if we don't have dark. So in order to have a more expansive experience of itself, source started differentiating these layers of existence so that it could experience itself. So if everything is all one thing, how do we know what that thing is? Unless there's something that's not that one thing that, that allows us to kind of look back and see that. So at source, we have just imagine this giant battery. So then there are layers differentiated out from source, and this is all just source energy experiencing itself in different ways. That's what density is. There's no judgment there. The denser places are not worse than the more expanded places. This is all different ways for source energy to experience itself. So we've got the battery there, that's source. We've got one differentiation out from source in religious terminology. This is seraphim, but this is these are beings that have just enough of a light body to not be source energy, and they hold the space of this battery. So in my mind, like the seraphim are the room that the warp core, that the engine room on the ship in Star Trek that the warp core exists in. The seraphim have just enough physical matter, just enough light to kind of be one layer differentiated from source. And again, if you if you don't like the religious terminology, you can think of it as just one layer of differentiation, very neutral language. So two layers of differentiation in religious terminology is what people think of as archangels. So these, they have more of a physical matter. They're able to leave the source kind of battery room. They're able to leave engineering. So the seraphim are always in engineering. They're always taking care of the warp core. That's their whole job. They never leave with a notable exception we're not going to go into here. They pretty much don't leave that space. Archangels have more differentiation. They still don't have physical bodies. They're made of light. They can come and go. That's why a lot of healers work with archangels. Again, the angel terminology, you can think of this as two layers differentiated from source. If you don't like that terminology, just giving it to you for some context because most people have at least heard of archangels. Then at three la layers differentiated from source, we start to get things like angels. So the further differentiated from source you get, the denser the energy gets until eventually we get a physical body. So at one end of this spectrum, we have this battery, this warp core, which is source itself. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the densest matter you could possibly imagine. In my world, this comes through. It's called mud world. When I work with, I work with beings. This is where life kind of starts a lot of times. This is where people who are working through karmic contracts who want to kind of start at the very beginning, they start in this place called Mud World, the densest, sort of heaviest, most compressed physical place that exists, almost like the opposite of source. So from there, there's all different layers of differentiation, some of which have physical mass, physical bodies, physical realms, some of which do not. They're non-corporeal. So 
there are beings, lots of beings quant in the quantum realm, I think a lot of people think of them as star seeds, like coming from other solar systems, that that is the case. But also there's realities that are like right next to realities that have just different, like ghosts, for example, ghosts do not exist in this physical reality, but they exist in the in the energetic realm, right next to our physical reality, so that a lot of people can actually see them. So where are humans? Somewhere on the spectrum, all the way from source to what I call mud world, there's humans a little closer on that density realm because we have physical bodies. That's all density means is that we have physical bodies. So this 3D, 5D split on this huge spectrum, it's actually a tiny little leap. We're staying in the physical, we're staying in the same realm with each other, but we're going to have access to more of that expansion, more of that lightness. We have the opportunity to release some of the density we've been holding as humans. Not enough density to lose bodies and leave this physical realm. That's not what this is about because this physical realm exists for a reason. Everyone who is here is here for a reason. You incarnated, you came into a body at this period in history with a very specific call to service. That's what we are here to do. And this 3D to 5D is really a step into service. It's a step out of the ego space, this like fear-based kind of mind that tells us we need to protect ourselves. We need to like look out for ourselves first. 5D is an expansion out of that into this life of service. What am I here to do? How can I serve? How can I bring more love into my field, into other people's fields? That's all this is. It's an expansion out of the density of fear and into the expansion of love. And on the grand scale of things, it's kind of like, you know, the blip of a human life compared to the whole time that the earth has been here. You know, even he, humans in general have not been here for very long over the, like, whatever it is, billions of years that the earth has been here. Then if you think of a single human life, but then if you take a single human, like if I think about myself, if at 10 years old, you had told me that getting from 10 years old to 70 years old is like the snap of a finger. It's like a blip on a scale. That's not how we experience it. And it's, and we're meant to experience time the way we do. We're meant, we're here to experience, this is source experiencing itself in a denser physical plane. What are, what are the rules here? What are, what are the laws of physics? How can we delight in having a body? That's one of the, the tools we're going to talk about is actually pleasure, is finding enjoyment, is finding bliss. That is a huge part of expansion. We are in physical bodies for a reason. So what has been happening over the last eight or nine months is that now we're going to get into this analogy of the train tracks. I, I think this is the clearest analogy. So for a long time, we were all on one train. We were all on this like 3D train. And then there's also, I'm not an astrologer, but there's also some astrological sort of windows here. So this sort of coming from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius is what first sort of opened this idea that we didn't have to be in this dense plane. We didn't have to be in so much fear and contraction and density. There were options. And so the track sort of split into two different tracks. So there's like the 3D and the 5D track. But these trains have essentially been connected. It's been almost like they've been joined by a bar. They're not even just traveling at the same rate. It's like there was a bridge back and forth. You could easily move back and forth the, between the trains, like a walkway. You didn't have to James Bond, like, jump from one train to the other because the trains were connected, essentially. So what is happening now is the trains are not only are they disconnecting, but they're diverging. They're going in two different directions. And the information that has come from my guides is that the 3D train is going to get more dense. So that's why a lot of us feel right now like really kind of compressed. And there's a lot of like physical symptoms. There's bloating and skin breakouts and headaches and um, heaviness and, and emotional heaviness, feelings of being kind of depressed or hopeless, like the state of the world just seeming, oh, like really overwhelming. 
That is this compression because we are being invited to choose to step out of that compression. We are being invited to walk over to the 5D train and take it into a completely new earth, a completely different humanity, a, a humanity based in much more love and expansion, mutual support, all of the things that people are already talking about and have been talking about for a while now if you know where to find them and how to listen. So what is happening this week, I believe, on this coming Saturday, June 15th, but again, time, no, we don't all experience time the same way. This is not, I do not believe this is like a one-time thing that's going to happen to everyone everywhere. In over the course of this next week, it may have already even happened where you are or for you personally, these trains are disconnecting. And the sound, my guys were actually giving me a sound of like a thunk, like this thunk. And, and it's sort of like the thunk of the disconnection as well as the thunk of the train tracks diverging. So if you've ever been on a train and they switch tracks, there's a noise to it. It goes thunk because they've got to divert you to this other track. So the trains have been together and just over the course of this year, that sort of connection is has severed. You can't just, it's not as easy to walk back and forth between the trains anymore. You still can. You can James Bond jump from train to train. We're going to talk a little bit more about that because that's part of the fear mongering. What is about to happen is they are going to start diverging. And the 3D train is going to go into, it's going to continue in density and, and perhaps even go into more density, more conflict, more unhappiness, more heaviness, more trauma. The 5D train is going to go the opposite direction. They're going to kind of diverge. The 5D train is going to go into more expansion and more love and more harmony. Does this mean like overnight world peace? I wish. No, this is a process. This is not like an all or nothing thing. Again, this is not like the rapture where like somebody waves a magic wand and like we just split this. And this is purposeful because this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to choose expansion over density. Now, once these trains diverge, this is one of the other big misconceptions and a lot of the fear mongering. People are really worried, first of all, about like, what about my loved ones who are on the 3D train and I'm on the 5D train? And also, are they stuck there? Because that's another thing. You need to make this decision. You're going to get stuck. So here's the thing. You can always get off a train and get to the other train. Is it as easy as it has been to just walk back and forth? Like, no, now they're, they're separated and you have to kind of jump. It takes a leap, a leap of faith to kind of come out of density and into expansion. That's already been going on for a while. As the trains diverge, they're, it, they're going to get further and further apart. Does that mean you can't go from one to the other? No, it, you can always make the decision to expand. It's just a little longer of a journey, perhaps. And this is always a journey. The journey for most of us who have awakened, who are in a spiritual awakening, began with trauma healing, began with recognizing the density we were in, the trauma frequencies we were carrying, and starting to make intentional decisions about letting go of that density, about, about stepping into clarity, expansion, and harmony, or what many people call healing. And most of us went through a really compacted, dense period of time that we call the dark night of the soul before we got to something like awakening. This is a really, this has been going on again individually for a really long time. People choosing to move out of density and into expansion. The difference here is that we're being presented globally, humanity wide, with this really beautiful option to do this intentionally and to do this as a huge group which could be such an amazing shift for mankind if we choose to do this so let me address the question about people getting left behind and sort of people being stuck on one train and i i'm going to tell you a little bit of a story to illustrate this and then we'll talk a little bit about tools and then we're going to do a meditation to give you tools to help you with this transition process. You can keep using, not just through this week, but through the future. Because this, again, this is just the beginning of this. It's going to get 
even more intense before it gets less intense because of this sort of increase of energy that's coming in for us. Again, this is not happening to us, it's happening for us. So I've talked a lot about my dad on the show and our last full episode, I talked about riding the wave of grief. I've talked about him a lot. He passed away in 2017. And my dad was a fairly angry person, especially when I was growing up. I was afraid of him. He was really angry a lot of the time. He he was verbally, emotionally abusive to us. And as he got older, he he did he mellowed out a little bit. But it's interesting, when I went to massage school way back in 2003, and I I was getting used to feeling people's bodies, feeling the quality of the muscles or, you know, it was always interesting to me if I put my hands on him, he was like a rock. He was a dense individual. He was holding a lot of anger. He was holding a lot of fear. He was a very dense individual. So that lightened a little bit as he got older. He, he sort of expanded a little bit, but he remained a fairly dense person. He was in a fairly dense field. And when we, I'm going to see if I can get through this story. When we made the decision for him to go into hospice, he had gone into the hospital. And um, so what used to happen to me, doesn't happen so much anymore because I have better energetic boundaries, but people used to wake me up in the middle of the night spiritually and ask me for help with people who had moved on beyond this plane or sometimes the higher selves or spiritual aspects of people that were still alive. So what happened was my dad was in the hospital. He woke me up in the middle of the night spiritually and he said, I'm going to die soon. I'd like you to help me. And I was like, I can, it's, I had, I woke up in a panic, first of all, because I didn't know what he meant by soon. Like, I was like, soon in five minutes? Like, soon in five days? Like, what does soon mean? Um, so I was a little bit like, there was this sense of urgency. Um, but it was very clear. Like, it was a very clear message that came from his higher self, from his, like, soul being, from from straight from his energetic source. So I rushed over to the hospital, because, again, I didn't know what soon meant. And he was, he was kind of just waking up. It was fairly early in the morning. And um, I sat with him and I said, hey, dad, do you remember talking to me last night? Uh, you came to visit me. And he's like, I did? I, I've been here all night. What are you talking about? And I said, no, like your spirit, your soul came to visit me. And you asked me to help you transition out of this life. You asked me to help you die. And... I think that was the day or maybe the next day he went into hospice. I have never seen anybody expand the way that I saw him expand over the next few days. He died several days later. He was completely willing to let go of that density. I mean, he didn't have a choice because the density leaves when we die, but we take some of that with us. That's kind of what people talk about when they talk about karma. And we all do it. It's not that we've done anything wrong. That's another black and white sort of Catholic heaven hell thing. It's just source experiencing itself, source experiencing energy and li different layers of density of energy and learning different lessons about about them about itself about ourselves about relationships with other people so we went in he went into hospice and this man who had been so dense for so many years just completely expanded i've never seen anything like it before that or since he just made this decision I offered, he asked me for help on the energetic. I offered the help in the physical and he was like a different person. He started saying things to people that he had never said before, you know, sort of making last statements and, and trying to leave in a way that he didn't leave a lot of things unfinished. Um, we talked about what to expect. I said, somebody usually meets you, you know, on the other side, you're going to kind of spiral out of your head. You're going to start kind of doing that. And then eventually you're just going to leave and somebody will be there to greet you. And, and then we saw who it was. And one of the gifts that he's given me 
that I've talked about before is that he later, just about, I think last year, he let me see what it looked like when he died. He let me see who greeted him and, and just how loved and welcomed and supported he was. So if this man who had so much density for 70 plus years could release that in two to three days, there is no reason that anyone is going to get stuck on this dense train, in the dense plane. You can always choose expansion. So the worry about leaving someone behind, the worry, and the people keep asking about children. Children have a beautiful expanded energy. We're the ones, <laughs> we're the ones who teach them to be contracted because there's this programming that's been passed down, this trauma cycle that's been going on for since the beginning of humanity at this point. Don't worry about kids. It is difficult when you have family members who are still in that density. It's already been that way. It's already been that way that if you are somebody who has done trauma healing work, who is stepping into spiritual awakening, I can guarantee you you've lost at least one friend or family member along the journey. It's unfortunate, but it happens. And, and lost, I mean like they're no longer in your life. Like, And this is a frequency thing. This is just a vibrational thing. And the way I like to explain this to people is that I was a classical music, musician growing up, I have a degree in music. If you listen to a symphony, not everybody is playing together at the same time. That would just be a cacophony. I mean, it happens sometimes, like the end of the 1812 overture, there's cannons going off. Like sometimes, yes, everybody's in sync and everybody's playing. But sometimes there's whole movements of a piece where the, the winds, for example, sit it out and only the strings play. Or the violin and viola have a duet and the cello's not playing. So when people come in and out of your life, this is just about vibration. So when you choose to step out of density and to step into more expansion, you do sometimes have a disconnection from people who are still really in that density. I mentioned my dad. He was my dad. There were points in my life when I thought about separating myself from him because it was difficult to watch him sort of self-destruct the way that he did over this period of years. But in the end, I decided that what what does love do? Love allows. I don't have to be in this space with you. I can allow you to be in a more dense space. I can choose to be in a more expanded space. And and when we can really come together like we did at the end of his life and since, we actually have had a much more expansive relationship now that he's not in the density of his body. I sometimes call it ostrich people. So there are people who are, have kind of their head in the sand. You can think about that as the density. And then they come up. And when they come up, if we are in 5D and we are in love and we are in not judgment, we welcome them with open arms. Hey, you're here. Come on over. It's so great over here. And sometimes they come. Sometimes they take a step or two. Sometimes they go right back down into the sand. There's no judgment there. We have to let people take this journey as they're ready. So you might find that even people in your very closely knit group of friends and family, no, you no longer feel connected to them in the way you used to. It's okay. It's just a function of your vibration changing. And it's really hard to not take that personally. It's really hard to let go of somebody who has been in our life for a long time, but you don't have to, I mean, if it feels abusive, step away, absolutely. But what you can do is kind of, again, allow them to be in their density, give yourself a wider field, but allow them to welcome them into your field to whatever capacity they can accept it. Because what happens a lot of times is that when people are in density, they're really uncomfortable with expansion. And the way I thought about this earlier was if you think about hoarders. So people who hoard possessions, they hoard possessions because it makes them feel safe. That is that density. 
I am surrounded by this, this sort of press of physical things that's, that's really just a reflection of the energy. That density makes them feel safe. Too much movement makes them feel unsafe. It might make them feel exposed and unprotected. This is due to trauma triggering. So people who are in density, we want to have love for those people. We want to have sympathy for those people. We don't have to join into the density. We don't have to come all the way into their field. We don't have to stay in that density. We can hold space around it and welcome them into expansion. Even after this split happens, I, a lot of people are asking me about their spouse, their partner. Just allow space for them and recognize that they have the sovereignty to make their own decision. And they may not be making it intentionally, and that's okay. They just may not be along the path far enough that they're ready to, to be in an intentional space. When we're in trauma, that is reaction. We don't have a lot of intention. As we start to come out of that, we can move into responding where we can actually live with intention. And it can feel threatening to people who are still in that reactive space when they when they come into the space of somebody who's in that more responsive energy. All we can do is send them love. Do this work on yourself because this work ripples out. Energy vibrates. Energy moves. So the more expanded you allow yourself to be, first of all, the more you're going to attract other people who are expanded. You're going to find your soul family, even if your physical lineage family feels like they're not in alignment vibrationally with you anymore. You will find people who are vibrating in a similar space as you are. And the more of us that do that, the more that expansion just keeps expanding and, and the more people start to wake up. So this is not an all or nothing thing. There's no like hopelessness here. There's no pressure around like, I have this single moment to make a decision. Yes, choose expansion as much as you can in as many moments as you can. Even when we feel contracted, even when things are not going well, there's always, there's a little room for expansion. That's the practice. I just went down to Mexico and like right before we left a bunch of stuff, we had a plumbing thing and then we got down there and like someone had torn a towel rack out of the wall, like all these little things are going wrong. And that is sometimes the opportunity to practice. How can I find expansion in this moment? How can I find expansion in this moment? And sometimes you won't. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. That's not what humanity is all about. Humanity is about what we're doing. We're experiencing, we're in density so that we can appreciate when we move back out of density. We've come into these physical bodies to experience so many amazing things that don't exist elsewhere. So, and this is getting long, but it feels important. So I'm just gonna say this and then we'll head into kind of the tools portion of this. One of the things I've noticed as I've been making this transition is how much more beautiful nature looks, especially, and that's actually one of the tools we're gonna talk about to help you expand, getting into nature. And I've been driving, I live in Arizona. It's really hot and really dry right now and fairly uncomfortable, but as I'm driving, I can see the greenery of the trees. We don't have a lot of trees, but the trees we have are still really green and they look so much more vibrant to me than they have in the past because I'm accessing this expanded state of awareness and connection. So we are here in the physical to experience the pleasure of being in the physical body, the joy of being in the physical body. When I communicate with my seraphim guides, they don't have any idea what it's like to be in a body. They've never been in a body. And so this idea of there's something delightful that they are sort of missing out on. Yes, they're in this amazing state of bliss that as humans, we're like, oh, I wish I could be there. But also like the ocean and the mountains and the trees and the flowers and the birds and the relationships we can have with other people, the opportunity to really connect and expand, to experience physical pleasure, you know, in whatever way that comes across, that is what we're here for. And that is actually, that's a good segue into the tools. How do we do this? How do we make this transition? So right now we're being asked to release density as much as we can. 
there is actually a vortex that's open to release that density. I'm going to walk you through that in the meditation to release the density because the more density we can release, the more space we can make for expansion. Think about the bouncy ball. If, I, if I'm in this little closet and I can step out into the stadium, there's so much more space. I can only expand so much in this tiny little closet. I want to come out of the closet and into the expansion. So how do we do that? We release the density that we're holding in the body because energy is, the body is energy. Energy exists within the body, in every single cell of the body, in all of the systems that people have organized, the chakra system, the traditional Chinese um, medicine meridians. There's, there, We're all energy. Everything's energy. The body's energy, even though we experience it as physical, as denser. The field around the body, the auric field or the aura, extremely important for this right now. That is part of this expansion is like, hey, I'm not just a body anymore. That's the 3D. I am so much more. I am all of the energy around my body. I am my connection to my past lives. I am my connection to my ancestors, both physically and energetically. I am my connection to my quantum bodies, these other starseed, non-human bodies that I have occupied. We have been here before. If you are watching this, if you are curious about 3D, 5D, I can almost guarantee you, you have some sort of a starseed origin and you're here to serve. We access these bodies in order to serve, in order to help other people wake up and access their bodies and for that to ripple out. So we're going to release density. We're going to step into expansion as much as we can. I'm going to guide you through that on the meditation. Come back and do the meditation a lot this week. Somebody asked me, how often should I be meditating? Just once or twice a day or all the time? Like, once a day, that's good. Twice a day if you're really feeling into it. Like, again, enjoy your life. Live your life. Go out and have some good food. Have a really nice conversation with someone. And also, do the meditation. Don't completely... It doesn't do us any good. We're not effective in the physical if we're only ever focused on the spiritual. And in fact, we need to be embodied in our physical body to really access all of the energy in order to expand so here are some tips beyond the meditation for dealing with this because it does feel intense. It does feel kind of dense and compressed. I, almost, I felt like there was like a weight pressing on my head over the last week that finally lifted over this weekend after I did this density release I'm going to walk you through. But here are some other things you can do. Water. Get in the water. Sit in the water. Go swimming. Stand in the shower. Drink a lot of water. Water is energetically and physically cleansing. It is a really good way to release. And especially when you're doing release work, there's a reason body workers always tell you to go home and drink a lot of water. It helps to move that density out of your system. Self-care, any kind of self-care. We did a show on self-care a little while ago. You can go back and listen to that. Self-care is not frivolous and self-care is not selfish. So reaching out to somebody who can help you with this, getting some body work, great time to do that. Get a massage, get some body work, get someone to help hold space to help you release that if you have access to it, there's lots of ways to do it on your own, but it's always nice to have assistance with that. Spend some time in nature, sit outside, turn off the news, turn off the TV, I am always I am always a proponent of like being a citizen of the world, but right now it's it's not really serving us. I actually had the news on when I was driving in the car and I just I had to turn it off. It was like this is not serving and it's not me burying my head in the sand. It's me choosing a different vibration than than what comes through as really kind of fearful and dense. So turning off your electronics for a little while. You know, if you're going to be consuming on your phone, finding expansive things that support your expansion, not doom scrolling, not fear scrolling, not comparing yourself to other people. Social media is awful for that. You know, looking at other people who seem to have these perfect lives and you're thinking, oh, my life's not perfect. Nobody has a perfect life. People who are obsessed with like their appearance, are not 
that's not that's not where we're going. That has no, That's a 3D thing for sure. We're going into 5D. We're going into authentic, authenticity, transparency, being vulnerable, the, the amazing courage that comes through vulnerability, who's saying, I'm not perfect, I make mistakes, I'm doing the best I can. So finding space that feels safe to you. And what I've been telling my clients here, find some anchor spaces. So what happens to me sometimes is like, I feel really safe and comfortable in my home and I feel really safe and comfortable here in my office. And when I'm driving between the two, which is really only like a five to 10 minute drive, which is amazing. But sometimes when I'm driving right now, I'm looking around and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really not in this expanded reality right now. Like I'm, it's like I'm passing through that really dense kind of plane between two expansive places. So if you're at work, maybe it's in the bathroom. Maybe you go out to your car. Maybe like when I'm in my car driving, my car has the vibration of me because it's an extension of my, my field. So finding the places where you feel safe outside, getting outside is a great, because there's so much space outside physically. I'm in a room, there's walls. There's a little bit of of a feeling of confinement of my energy. I can expand beyond the walls. It's a lot easier to do that outside. So it's really hot here. Like I've been getting in my pool. I'm privileged enough to have a pool. I can be outside. I can hear the sounds of nature. I can expand and I can soak in water, which is amazing. So just some extra little tools to kind of help you along the way. This meditation is really gonna help we're going to do it kind of in two parts, releasing of the density, opening this vortex to allow the energy to kind of drain out. You can think of like a water going down a drain and then opening to this really beautiful expansion. I've got my dimensional frequency expansion bowl. This is a portal to the seraphim, seraphim realm as well as the dimensional frequency expansion vocals that I use. This is a portal directly to the seraphim realm. It doesn't get one layer of differentiation, it doesn't get much more expanded than that. So we're gonna bring all of that into the meditation to help us make it through this transition, to support each other, to congratulate each other. I have received so much love on TikTok about the videos I've been making. There are people out there who want you to succeed, who want to travel with you, know that. Know that you are so supported. Even if you don't feel supported in the physical realm, I spent years in hermit mode because people did not understand me and I just kept getting hurt because I was always more open and vulnerable than a lot of people were comfortable with. You are so supported in the spiritual. There is an entire, when my dad showed me what he saw when he died, he saw his mother come to greet him. He saw the, the relatives that he'd known in this life. But beyond that was the word that came through was legion. There was a legion of spiritual beings, what some people might call angels or archangels, waiting to welcome him. All There is a legion of beings in the spiritual plane supporting you, holding space for you, so allow yourself to receive that support. That's another big thing in the 5D. Yes, we are living in service, but when we open ourselves to give, we also open ourselves to receive. And it's meant to be reciprocal. It's meant to be that you give and then you receive. You give and then you receive. And it's meant to be flowing and beautiful and expansive. And we are going to get there together. <sighs> Ooh, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> so let's meditate together. So for this meditation, find a place where you feel really safe. It doesn't matter if you're sitting up or lying down. You want to be really cozy and supported and safe. So maybe that means lying in bed, wrapped in a, a comforter or a blanket, Maybe that means sitting on your couch or lying somewhere in your own space. Maybe you're doing this in your car, don't do it while you're driving, but that can be a really beautiful space to be safe. Allow yourself to be supported while you're doing this work. This is really intense and beautiful work we're about to do here. 
So put some time aside to really devote yourself to this in a place where you feel safe and supported. We're going to begin, as we almost always do, with three to five deep oxytocin breaths. This breath vibrates the nerves that vibrate your vagus nerve. It tells your body to come out of fight, flight, or freeze and into the ease response. We're going to breathe in through the nose. We're going to let the belly float out really strongly. We're going to sigh that breath out with an audible ha sound. That sound actually vibrates those nerves. I'll practice one with you and then I'll ask you to go ahead and do at least four more of those, allowing the breath to float in. <sighs> Continue to do, again, at least three or four more of those. You might feel or even have heard in my voice a little bit of hitching, a little bit of catching. That is the energy starting to move. So the more you do those breaths, just like with chanting, the smoother the sound will get because the energy is starting to settle. We're just giving some neurological information to our body here, telling the body it's safe. It's safe to come in to ease, to rest and digest to parasympathetic mode. You may have been in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn all day. You may have been running around. This may be the first time you've taken any sense of stillness. So before we get into the work, just give yourself a moment here to be still. Continue with that oxytocin breath if it feels good, if it feels supportive. Anytime you breathe out through the mouth, that's a really good way to release energy. So even if you're not using the audible ha sound, breathing out through your mouth is going to help throughout this meditation. We want to arrive in our body before we begin to do energetic work. So allow the top of your head, the crown chakra, to gently open. I'm assisting you with some Reiki through this transmission. We're just going to invite that beautiful, unconditional love energy, that battery, that source energy, ki, chi, prana, God, spirit, whatever word works for you. We're going to invite that to come in through the top of the head, filling your head, filling your scalp and your skull and your brain, really bathing yourself in this wonderful light of unconditional love, this golden light allowing it to flow down through the neck and the throat into the jaw, letting this beautiful energy flow down into your shoulders, out into your upper arms, down into the elbows, into the forearms, wrists, and hands. Start writhing fully in your body while you invite this source, this energy you're made of to fill yourself Letting this energy flow down into your chest and your upper back. Filling the heart space with love and light. Letting this energy flow down into your belly, into your mid back, low belly and low back here. Take a nice deep breath as this breath flows into your pelvis. And as you sigh it out through your open mouth, allow this energy to flow down through your thighs down to your knees. Take another deep breath in here, allowing this energy to come down through your body into your knees as you sigh this breath out, sending this beautiful energy down your lower legs all the way to your ankles and feet, really occupying your body, really filling your body up now with this love and light that is the source of your being, coming fully present into the body allowing yourself to settle. So we're going to work with this really beautiful vortex that's open below us right now. So at the base of your support, if you're sitting up, it might be the where your feet are, it might be below your bottom. If you're lying on your back, you might think of this right below your pelvis or your solar plexus. There is this beautiful vortex of energy right now. It's, it's moving like a drain. 
and it's inviting you to release any density it's inviting you to release any energy that's not serving your highest good frequencies of trauma frequencies of fear frequency of dis-ease of illness of doubts of mental limitations limiting beliefs all of these dense energies are being invited to be released through this beautiful vortex right now you don't have to worry about where this energy is going it's going to be used it's going to be recycled for the highest good you can release your density now into this beautiful vortex into this portal just setting the intention here and if you state this out loud it will have more potency but if you, that's not comfortable or you're not in a place to do that you can just think this in your head and i'm going to assist you with some dimensional frequency expansion vocal affirmations but we're going to say it first i easily release density from my body and energetic fields i am safe i am free i easily release density from my body and energetic fields i am safe i am free so this is our mantra we're going to use to assist in this release. You can continue to say that out loud. You can tweak that. The more personalized it is for you, the more powerful it will be. So if that calls to you to tweak the languaging, please do so. But you're welcome to continue with this. I'm going to use some dimensional frequency to assist with this. And all we're doing here is we're actually opening to this portal with intention i'm assisting you with energy with reiki as well and we are using this affirmation to take this density and just allow it to drain down into this vortex so you can imagine that density you might feel kind of like darkness or stagnation or tightness or tense tension just allowing that to drain down and out your body into this vortex as you continue to use this mantra if it calls to you. I easily release density from my body and energetic fields. I am safe. I am free. I easily release density from my body and energetic fields. I am safe. I am free. I easily release density from my body and energetic fields. I am safe, I am free. I easily release density from my body and energetic fields. I am safe, I am free. I easily release density from my body and energetic fields. I am safe, I am free, I am safe, I am free. Huye shanatakaie takanaie shatakaie o shatakanaie sataka sheyanakaia shataka. Huye I am oi am I I am. Releasing the mantra now, if you've been repeating that. Setting the intention that as you move forward to the rest of your day or evening, 
you will continue to allow this density to release you will continue to allow this beautiful vortex to take this density out of your body out of your energetic fields As you're ready, we're going to move into expansion now. So we've released density. We're going to set the intention here to expand into this space we're freeing up. Just like we might declutter a house and then have more space to bring in new fresh objects. We are going to invite new fresh energy into these spaces where we've released the density and we're going to allow our field to expand if you're not used to working with your energetic fields don't worry about it we're just using intention it can be helpful to use your hands as well to just slowly and gently kind of push your hands out from your sides to extend your field setting the intention you can move them forward we want expansion in all planes here. So you can imagine a big, beautiful bubble around your body. Just let that bubble get bigger. Let that bubble expand. And then we've already opened to that beautiful flow of source energy of unconditional love. We're just filling that space with love now. Filling any of the spaces within and around the body where we release density, we're just filling with this expansion, with this love and light. For the highest good, always for the highest good. Just allowing yourself to feel lighter here. You might feel a sense of relief I'm assisting you with dimensional frequency expansion and Reiki through this transmission. We're going to step into a little bit of sound as well to help with this expansion. So we've released density. Now we want to get bigger and more beautiful. We want to claim this space with this lightness, with this beautiful, golden, unconditional love and light that is the source we are all made of. Inviting one more mantra in here just for the last few moments. I easily expand into love and light for the highest good. I allow myself to expand with 
love for the highest good. I open my heart and my entire being to the source of all that is for the highest good. I allow myself to lighten and to expand for the highest good. I allow myself to claim expansive, beautiful space within and around my body, filling myself with love for the highest good. I am safe. I am free. Allow yourself to come still, knowing you can come back and repeat this whenever you like. I suggest trying this once a day for the next seven to 10 days, just noticing the difference in your field. As your field shifts, even if you're not physically aware of your energetic shifts yet, you will be as you work with your energy. As your field shifts, as you release density, as you expand, you will notice reflections in the world around you. You will notice more levity, more lightness, more play, more pleasure, more joy and expansion. You will notice that things seem to flow a little more easily or with less effort. You will notice people beginning to show up who have love for you, who want to support you, who want to see you claim your space. You will notice little signs from the universe that are evidence of this amazing, incredible support you have from the spiritual plane, from this source energy, from this unconditional love that is what you are made of. You are loved and you are love. Allow yourself to receive this love. last few moments here take a nice big cleansing breath in through the nose sigh it out through the mouth add that audible ha sound if it feels good maybe do two or three of those just really allowing this release this expansion you may feel no difference and that's completely fine come back and do this again and you will notice a shift Sa-nam. the truth of your identity is that you are an expansive being of unconditional love You deserve to feel this expansion while you take immense pleasure in this physical realm, in allowing yourself to give and receive, to be who you are, to occupy your space fully, to claim your light and let it shine. If you're in a space where it's safe to drift off to sleep and you'd like to do so, you can allow yourself to do that now. If you're coming back to the rest of your day or evening, just slowly begin to move your body. Be really slow with this. Be really reverent. You might take a little extra time here if you have the space for it. You don't have to come right back into whatever's next in your day if you've got space for that, but just beginning to move your body, noticing perhaps a 
a bit of a shift in how your body feels. Maybe you notice a little bit less discomfort, a little more lightness in your body. If you don't notice anything, that's also completely fine. Maybe shrug your shoulders, move your neck around, circle wrists and hands, just coming fully back here to your body. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. Know that you are safe. Know that you are supported. Know that this opportunity is here for you to choose love and that we can continue to choose love in each moment to the best of our ability, allowing for the fact that we are human, that we are in bodies, that we are here to experience those bodies, as well as remember our spiritual divine nature. Have a beautiful rest of your day or evening, and I will see you next week for Wind Down Wednesdays.